Hello friends! Today I'm walking along the trails of a coniferous forest. Forests are great ecosystems that provide shelter to a wide variety of animals and plants. The forests also provide recreation and activities that encourage learning. You hear that? There's a stream nearby! Wow! What a gorgeous looking stream! There are many types of forests in the world, you know. The type of forests we'll be studying today are coniferous forests. Coniferous forests are mainly made up of conifer trees. These type of trees bear cones. Coniferous forests are mostly found in the regions of the earth that have long winters and short summers. Redwood trees are the tallest coniferous trees in the world. And sugar pine cones, well, they're the largest cones in the world. Did you see that big pine cone? I'm taking a photo of it. I want to take these memories home. Pine cones are gymnosperms. The word gymnosperms means naked seed. Gymnosperms are plants that produce seeds without fruit. A gymnosperm falls in the category of plants that are vascular. But what do I mean by vascular? Vascular plants have tube-like structures you can see with your naked eye. These tubular systems carry nutrients throughout the entire plant. The most common gymnosperm alive are conifers. Conifers trees have needle-like leaves covered by a waxy coat. This coat protects the trees from losing water. Christmas trees are from the family of conifers. And like other conifers, they have a green color year-round. Look at these fungi. They're well adapted to living in this environment. Adaptation is when living things make changes to thrive in their environment. But adaptation can also be seen with the naked eye. It might take thousands of years. Conifer trees have adapted to survive and compete with other species of trees in the forest. Those species that are able to adapt will compete with each other for survival. Trees compete for nutrients, light, and space in the forest. Conifer trees have a thick bark that protects them from winter's harsh and cold temperatures. Conifer trees branches are so flexible that when heavy snow falls on them, they won't break easily. Look at the squirrel. She's so cute. Because conifer trees are evergreens, they are able to photosynthesize during winter time and keep their green, vibrant color. But it is during forest fires that pine cones open and are able to release their seeds. Conifers establish a healthy cycle of death and rebirth during fires, and harmful insects and trees that compete for nutrients die. After forest fires, life begins again. Seeds that are able to reach the ash-fertilized soil will become seedlings, and a new tree is born. Reproduction is an important part of the cycle of life of any living thing, and conifers reproduce through pine cones. The male pine cones have pollen, and the female pine cones have seeds. But inside each seed, an egg lies dormant. As pollen is carried by the wind, it falls on the female egg cone. Fertilization occurs when the sperm of the male cone fertilizes the egg of the female cone to make an embryo. This embryo is a little sized tree that is protected by the seed wall. The embryo also has a store food needed to sprout. This is an example of adaptation. 
but along the forest I can also see some flowering plants, and they are called angiosperms. Different from gymnosperms, angiosperms are vascular plants that have flowers and produce seeds in fruit. For example, tomatoes and oranges. There are at least 250,000 species of angiosperms in the world. But now let's talk about life cycle. Every living thing has a cycle of life. By learning about life cycles, we can learn about reproduction. Angiosperms reproduce through seeds, but required pollination in order for seeds to get fertilized. Once the pollen reaches the egg, fertilization occurs. The ovary of the flower will swell, and this will create a fruit. Animals eat the fruit, and the seeds fall to the ground. Once the seed reaches the perfect environment, they will germinate, and a plant is born. You hear that? There must be a beehive nearby. Let's see if we can find some other flowering plants around here. There, I see some flowering plants. So many different colors and sizes. Angiosperms are divided into two categories. We can tell them apart by closely looking at their physical characteristics. Let's take a closer look at dicots. Dicots have flowers with four or five petals. The leaves of dicots have net-like veins, and the stems of dicots have vascular bundles in a ring. The roots are mostly top roots, like roses, peas, tomatoes, and even oak trees. Monocots have flowers with three petals. The leaves are long with parallel veins. And the stems of monocots have a scattered vascular bundle. And the roots? Well, they're fibrous. Lilies, palm trees, and cereal grasses are some examples of monocots. Now, I don't know about you, but all of this walking has made me hungry. So I'm heading back to the beginning of the trail. I hope you guys learned a lot about gymnosperms and angiosperms. See you soon on my next expedition. Bye-bye.